All right, today we're going to talk about discretionary price levels and detecting them with Bloodhound. So the example we're focusing on today is this line that I've added to the chart and it's set to a value of 84. And if I double click it, we can confirm it's exactly 84 uh, for this example. And our goal here is to detect when the price crosses above or below the value of 84. Now, as you may know, Bloodhound cannot read drawing objects on the chart. There's actually several good technical reasons why that's not possible, largely because NinjaTrader just doesn't give us the right type of access to drawing objects on the chart. So we can't say, hey, Bloodhound, look for this line. But instead, we can say, Bloodhound, look for a value of 84 and compare that to the price level, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's bring up Bloodhound here. And there's three different solvers that can be helpful depending on what your goal is. So I'm gonna add them all to our board here and talk about them one at a time. So those three are the comparison solver, the crossover solver, and the threshold solver. So let's bring these over, give them some breathing room here. So let's start with the crossover solver. So the crossover has two inputs. Uh, so for input A, usually you want input A to be the faster of the two pieces of data you're working with. And remember, the two pieces of data we're looking at are the price. In this case, let's look at the close value of the bar, so the close price. And the other piece of data is a fixed value of 84, which is what our line was set to. So for input A, let's set that to price, the faster moving. It's already set to close, but there are other values you can choose in here. And then for input B, let's set that to a fixed value of 84. So even though you can't uh, detect the line itself that you've drawn on the chart, or maybe you have an indicator that is drawing a line on the chart for that day or something, it's very common, uh, you can tell Bloodhound, hey, here's the value, let's look for that. So in this case, we're getting what we expect because every time the price crosses down below 84, give us a short signal, and when it closed up above, give us a long signal. So it looks like that is working. Okay, so that's the crossover condition, but let's take a look at the comparison solver. Um, I'm gonna throw this in here and then it'll become clear what the difference is. So the comparison solver is exactly like the crossover. We have two inputs, um, input A and input B, and we're gonna set it up exactly the same. So we're gonna set input A as price and input B as our fixed value, 84. Okay, let's connect that and see the difference. So instead of getting a signal on just the bars in which the price crossed 84, we now get a signal on every single bar in which the close price is either above or below the line. So we're still getting that same short signal here and the long signal here because the price crossed down below, but now we're getting a signal on every bar showing where the close price is in relation to our horizontal line. Now, if we wanna have more control over our threshold values, because really this 84 line is just a threshold that we're looking to detect, uh, we can use the threshold solver. In the threshold solver, we only have one input, and that's going to be the close price. Because what we're saying is, look at the close price and see where it is in relation to various thresholds. In this case, just a single threshold, just for our simple example. To set that up, we go into the output settings right here. So we click the ellipses button next to threshold settings. That opens up the threshold rules or settings window. And in here, we can set it up exactly the way we did a minute ago. Um, it's just slightly different. So in here, we can say for a long signal, if the close of the price, that's what we said over here, if the close is greater than 84, then give us a long signal, uh, a full one or 100% long output. And then do the opposite. So for short, if the close is below 84, give us a full short output. Now, if I hit okay and connect that, 
it will behave exactly like our comparison solver did. Uh, where on any bar, um, it's just looking to see the close value compared to the fixed threshold value of 84. So you might wonder why would I use one or the other? Well, the threshold uh, does give us a little more nuanced control over threshold values. So for example, if I wanted to add a, let's say a value of 82 um, for our short, meaning only give us a long if the close price is above 84, but give us a short if it's below 82. Let's go ahead and click apply and see what happens. Okay, we've actually eliminated some signals because those bars were the ones where the close value of the bar was between those two values. We're saying it's not above 84 and it's not below 82, so therefore don't give us any signal. It has not met our criteria. Um, there's a lot more you can do with the threshold rules, but the whole idea is that you're basically comparing your input value, whether it's an indicator or your close price or whatever, you're comparing that to one or more threshold levels. And uh, there's quite a lot you can do in there, including doing range thresholds and things like that. Uh, to learn more, by the way, because there's obviously a lot more than we're going to cover in this simple video, uh, you can find uh, a lot of information under the Help tab. So if we're clicked on the Threshold Solver and click Help, that brings up the documentation page. But you can also find that same page uh, on our website. It might be a little bit easier to read if you're reading everything. So um, anyway, so those are the three different ways we can uh, detect when the price is interacting with a fixed threshold value.